Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today we're looking at the top 10 amazing facts about ninjas. Number 10. Kanoichi. Since women weren't allowed to serve as samurai, if a woman in feudal Japan wanted to provide military service to her clan, serving as a ninja was a much better bet. This was particularly true as women were much more likely to be invited into castles and fortresses than unfamiliar men. To make it even more uncomfortable for potential assassination targets, it was their usual practice to wait a bit before the hit. They tended to receive all the same training as their male counterparts did and actually had a slightly wider array of weapons. Female ninjas often used blades concealed inside fans or a particularly unnerving weapon called a cat's claw. It was a small, poison-tipped blade, less than three inches long, attached to a leather ring worn on a finger. Number 9. Actually Chinese Although there is inevitably murkiness to the activities and origins of ninjutsu, it appears that it does not come from the country so many of us associate it with. All the core principles that we associate with them were written in China almost a millennium before there is any evidence that ninjas were being used in Japan. Sun Tzu includes information on the five types of spies in his seminal classic The Art of War in the 5th century BC. As it happens, his thoughts on the matter were much harsher than the Japanese ninja doctrine, recommending that anyone who just knew all the active ninja agents for a clan should be put to death, whether or not there was evidence that the person intended to provide the information to the enemy. The most important event as far as spreading the practice to Japan was the collapse of the Tang Dynasty in the 10th century, which caused many military experts and scholars to flee China for the relatively peaceful island nation. Number 8. Magician Ninja Many ninjas would disguise themselves as street performers as part of their covert operations. The legend of the 16th century shinobi Kato Danzo has him seemingly going about it the opposite way. He began as a street magician performing an act where he would appear to swallow an ox. One time someone called him on how he did it, and Danzo responded by one-upping the previous trick, doing one where he made flowers seem to bloom instantly from scattered seeds. This was enough to get him an audience with the Kenshin clan, although you'd think such a public figure would not be a very good spy or assassin. He was given a test to steal a very well-protected and treasured sword. He got through an array of guards and swiped his objective, but made the mistake of taking a maid with him, which led to him not getting the job. He then made his final mistake by then trying to get a job with the rival province of Xi'an. There he was suspected of being a double agent. After Danzo attempted a burglary to make up for it, he was put to death. Number 7. Dressed and Armed for Concealment Despite how often you see it in fiction, ninjas didn't have special black ninja uniforms that concealed their faces or anything of the kind. Part of the whole point of being a good secret agent is to be as subtle or frankly boring as possible to avoid attention, so a highly stylized costume is the last thing you want. They much more reasonably dressed like farmers. Also, rather than employing flashy, suspicious swords, they tended to use sickles because that was something a farmer was likely to have. Number 6. Ninjas were not dishonorable compared to samurai There's a notion that because samurai were supposed to be so honorable with their Bushido code and all that, ninjas were basically the ones who had to do the dirty fighting so the esteemed samurai could keep their hands clean. Combat doctrine for the two groups was the same. It was more that ninjas needed to maintain a low profile while samurai were the public face of war. While naturally that meant there were slightly fewer chances for advancement when it came to reaching the very highest class of society, since they had to keep at least some of their operations secret, it did not mean that ninjas were considered secondary, inherently disgraceful soldiers. Number 5. Security Systems With trained assassins being a fact of life in times of war, the powerful people that were bound to be targets weren't just going to hire extra guards and leave it at that. Traps were installed that went far beyond mere tripwires. Holes were installed in walls to allow guards to monitor areas faster. Secret weapon compartments were hidden for emergency defense. Even inside floors were rigged to be extra susceptible to squeaking from the softest footfall. The very design of castles was made more complicated and difficult to traverse in hopes of confusing or at least slowing down potential assassins. Number 4. Scaffolding, Ferris Wheels, and Gliders The times that ninjas got to use more elaborate equipment was during sieges on castles and fortresses. You'd imagine that if a ninja needed to scale a wall on a castle at night, he or she would probably rely on a rope and grappling hook. 
Some, though, opted for much more elaborate setups because they had to bring up groups of ninjas at once. During one siege, ninjas at night silently assembled improvised scaffolding. Other times, a device was brought out which basically functioned like a crude ferris wheel, bringing up ninjas so quickly that it was described as a stream. When they got up on the wall, many used effectively a crude cloth parachute to drop down, a device which they called a human eagle. Building on these advancements in gliding, ninjas operating at night would use kite-like devices called Yami Doko to drop grenades over walls. Number 3. Ninja Purge In the late 1500s, two Japanese lords, Hideyoshi Toyotomi and Oda Nobunaga, began to try to kill off all ninjas in Japan. It was part of a campaign to fully unify the country, as ninjas were likely a voice of dissent as they weren't loyal to any specific regime as the samurai were. It wasn't just the ninjas, Buddhists, Christians, and European immigrants were also targeted. The culmination of this was a mass slaughter in the town of Iga in 1581, but the conflict went on for decades, including incidents like Ishikawa Goiman being boiled alive for a failed attempt on Toyotomi and two attempts to shoot Nobunaga, which involved three ninjas missing him but killing seven people standing near him. Although they hardly killed off all the ninjas, they definitely were severely weakened as a military force, and they never really recovered. Number 2. The first recorded Japanese ninja was a 13-year-old The first person that Japanese records name as being a ninja wasn't a government or military agent in any way. He certainly wasn't motivated by philosophy or anything of the kind. He was a child named Hino Kumawaka, and he was motivated to assassinate his target for utterly personal reasons. In 1330, his father had been exiled to the horrible island of Sado and sentenced to death. Kumawaka pleaded with the local governor to see his father, but was told he could not. As soon as his father was killed, Hino vowed to kill the governor and his son, and then commit suicide. He couldn't get near the target with how well the governor lit his room, so Kumawaka was said to have let moths into his room to douse the governor's light. When the time came to commit suicide after he had fled the scene of the murder, he decided it was better to live a useful life than die a useless death. He sneaked away while still being hotly pursued and got in contact with a monk fully confessing his crime. The monk helped smuggle him away from his filthy pursuers, and from there he joined a ninja group in service to the emperor. Number 1. Castle Sack The finest hour for ninjas in medieval Japan took place in 1562. Tokugawa Yasu had needed to capture Castle Kamenoyo, where the members of his family were being held hostage. After besieging the castle for two and a half months, the commanding officer changed his approach and ordered a team of 80 ninjas to sneak in using hooked spears and capture the castle under the cover of night. For extra effectiveness, they were dressed in enemy uniforms to cause confusion and give the impression the troops inside were betraying each other. They distinguished themselves by shouting passwords to each other during the sacking. During the attack, they further created confusion by setting fires around the castle. In the end, the garrison of 200 soldiers was completely destroyed, and the hostages were recovered. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below this video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you enjoyed this video, why not check out some of our other videos over there on the right. One is the top 10 horrifying facts you didn't know about samurai and the other is the top 10 horrifying facts you didn't know about knights. So if you enjoyed this video about ninjas, maybe you'll enjoy those as well. And thank you for watching.